Hey guys, or should I say, como estas from Costa Rica, San Jose, Costa Rica, where I've spent an extra week on account of the fact that I got denied entry to the United States on the grounds that I had a stopover in Frankfurt on my way back to the West, Western Hemisphere. Um, I didn't realise that having a layover counted as being in Europe, but apparently if you step one foot in Europe, you're not allowed into America for two weeks. So this would be episode 93 of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast. And I wanted to make a little video and podcast about what I see as one of the big problems with the self-help industry and personal development in general which is something that you might be familiar with if you've ever read some self-help books or been on YouTube or watched Anthony Robbins or Brendan Burchard or whoever's big in the self-help space these days, which is a lot of the time what happens is you read something or you watch a video or listen to a podcast and you might even get a little bit jazzed up about it and you're like oh that's so true you know maybe you listen to a spiritual or read a spiritual thing and you're like oh so profound but then what happens is you just more or less go back to the way that you've always been afterwards and nothing much changes you kind of just default to your regular state so I was thinking about words that motivate action. I've got like two examples that I think are quite um, potent from in the past. And then I'm going to talk about two examples from more recently, which I've found to be personally helpful. And maybe you can think about that. Um, how to apply the principle to you in those areas where you feel like you'd like to change or you'd like to motivate more action or experience life or yourself differently in relation to something. So one of the first examples of this I remember is, this is like over 10 years ago, I, I was watching a, a video uh, it was about how it's really important to filter your your drinking water um, because there's all, I can't, can't remember what chemicals are in the water now, but um, it, the, the information is readily available. It could be anything from particles of lead from old pipes to, you know, um, <laughs> bits of uh, the little particles of tissue paper and tampons that are from the recycled paper. Yeah, that might motivate your action, just the thought of that. Um, uh, uh, you know, obviously some people say that fluoride's harmful. I think there's uh, considerable evidence to actually back that up. Um, they, they put chlorine in it to disinfect it, which we know is a poisonous gas. So a little bit here and there is probably not going to kill you. It's not going to harm you. But there's, anyway, people say that over time these things build up. And the, the amount of toxicity, uh, you just don't want to put excessive uh, additional burdens in your body is what it comes down to. But th that's not really the point of the video. The point is, um, the person in the video said something which was, if you don't filter your water, then your body's the filter. And that's a great turn of phrase. And so great that um, when I, my girlfriend at the time came over, she was I, I was just newly dating her, and you know, a discussion went over to my little water filter and I used that turn of phrase, it was like, um, if you don't if you don't filter your water then your body's the filter. So she went I just said it in passing, but she went out and bought one and um she told me for her own house and she told me, Oh it was when you said uh, if you don't filter your water, your body's the filter. Um that, that's what made me buy, go out and buy the filter because sometimes just a turn of phrase can be so powerful and really get the principle across. Um, another great example which is really, really similar is I was listening to a podcast once and I'm not sure exactly what the guy said. He was a bodybuilder guy, but he said something like, you know, 
I paraphrased it to, you don't want to have trouble getting off the toilet when you're older, do, do you? And I put that in my book, Procrastination Annihilation. I said, so get squatting. He was saying, he was talking about the importance of squats. I think that's such a powerful turn of phrase, you know. You don't want to have trouble getting off the toilet when you get older. Because just the image of it is so undignifying. And it really can, a powerful phrase like that really can make you more motivated to take action in the here and now. Because it makes the consequences of not taking that action uh, much more palpable. So I think one of the problems is we're exposed to so many messages that something that may have been really powerful and mind-blowing a hundred years ago or a hundred and fifty years ago has no impact on you at all because you're just dead to it. You've heard all the ancient Stoic wisdom, the quotes from Buddhism, uh, from all the spiritual traditions, all the great quotes uh, you know, people tell you to contemplate your death, but you've heard it so many times that even when you do it, it doesn't motivate you because it's lost its power. So in this like contemporary world, how do we find handle words or powerful words that um, motivate our action? One practice I had for a great many years, I journaled almost every day for, for years. Um, and that was a hard habit to cultivate in the first place. But once I had it, I, it, I, I had it locked in. And even if I missed a, a day or two or even a week or something like that, once it was locked in, I'd always come back to it and I'd jump back on the wagon. But lately, well, for quite a long time now, um, for a good year, I've been really, really on and off with it until I came up with a power phrase that I felt... Um, Something about it just motivated me, and that was not journaling is abandoning myself. And I felt that to be very true when I thought of it. Not journaling is abandoning myself. Because by journaling, I bear witness to myself and all the stuff that's going on in my life, and I'm there for myself. I can console myself about anything that I'm down or sad about. And I can also give myself a pep talk and pick myself up and point out the things that are going well. So that's something I did every day. And to, to leave it, to leave that habit, it's not leaving the habit of journaling. It's abandoning myself. It's not being there for myself. And sometimes I think I'm most effective in taking care of myself. I'm most good at doing those things that are good for me when I'm connected to the idea that, well, you know, I've been through a lot of shit in my life. I didn't enjoy my childhood and the, the feeling is like, I owe it to myself, like to be a good caretaker for myself. I, I should do good things for myself because after what I've been through, I deserve it. Something like that, some kind of way of framing it, like, like you know, me taking care of myself, like be, being being responsible, a lot of the things that I've worked on and got good at are things that I think, like, yeah, I deserve, you know, I, I, I deserve to have fulfilling relationships, so it's good to have communication skills. Like, things that I've had to work on, I worked on them because I had bad experience in the past and I just didn't want to suffer anymore. So I felt like that was quite powerful. Um, not journaling is abandoning myself. Another one's quite funny and it's good to work with. I had a client that is uh, a tutor. She, she tutors kids and uh, 